guys, welcome to another edition of Jen <sniffs> Sniff Some Soap. It is midnight on Friday evening and I am sniffing some soap, look at that. I'm not only sniffing soap, I'm going to go through this week's Lush Kitchen menu, as the title suggests, and I'm in a really, really strange mood. It's Friday night, guys. Woohoo! Weekend! Lots of Lush pictures, photography, videos, etc, DIY things coming up. So I wasn't going to film this this evening because I thought, actually, Jen, you should go to bed and sleep. But I realised that this weekend is going to be jam-packed full of things. And that is because next week's Lush Kitchen menu is actually pretty impressive. There are so many things that I have in my vicinity around me that I can sniff, try out for you and really, really review. So this week on my Instagram, I am going to be so, so, so focused on bringing you pictures, descriptions, etc. Everything from this week's Lush Kitchen menu is available to read on my blog right now. Wow, the things I do for you. For those of you who have recently subscribed to me on YouTube, as well as saying a big hello and thank you, I just want to point out that there wasn't a video last week and that really is down to the fact that I am swamped with reviews. I think I said this on my previous Lush Kitchen video, with with the Lush Summit, with the Easter stuff coming out, with the Mother's Day stuff already out, with all the Valentine's Day stuff, with all of the things that's coming out in the kitchen right now, I am incredibly swamped. Below me, I have a good 30 plus products I need to review. I know for a fact there's about five or six over there. The Easter stuff is coming out next week and my priority right now is trying to update those reviews and get them out for you as soon as possible. So if you have been checking my blog, thank you so much because I know there's been a whole lot of people on my blog the last few weeks. There will be a new release review every single day. It might be really backdated as in Valentine's Day stuff, Christmas stuff. Once I get on top of that I can be doing one to two videos every single week for you guys and focus more on the video side of things but until I catch myself up I am just sitting there like a crazy maniac typing until three in the morning Saturdays and Sundays just to get this done for you because I want to update it and not just for you, for me as well. I feel like I'm wittering on. I'm going to right now and get onto this week's Lush Kitchen menu because there is so much to talk about. So one of the first products coming up on Monday is called Somewhere Over the Rainbow Soap. So I am going to resist the urge to sing the song, but you know the song I mean. Everyone's probably singing it right now and I'll get it in your head for the rest of the week and you'll hate me for it. But this is Somewhere Over the Rainbow Soap and your new one will come looking a little bit like this with that sparkly glitter. Now when Lush brought out that little clue earlier in the week and they said something about rose and they said something about silver luster, I immediately thought of three things. I thought of Christmas Hedgehog, which didn't seem particularly seasonally correct. I thought of luster dusting powder and then I thought of somewhere over the rainbow soap, so I was correct. I should get a brownie point or somebody should send me some Lush. This is a soap that I actually read, and I do this all the time, I go back and I read my reviews on my blog because I'm constantly updating because either things change or I reuse it and try it again and again and again and I change my opinion of it. And when I read my review of this, I feel a little bit like I put it to shame when it didn't need to be. I think Lush have tweaked this soap since it first came out because when it first came out, I was so amazed. I thought it was one of the most beautiful soaps that Lush have ever created. For those who don't know what it was or haven't seen pictures, it was a big circular piece of soap and it just had all these beautiful pastel colours that made it look a bit like a rainbow but in circular form. And I bought myself a piece and I was so excited to try it. I thought it's going to be fruity and zesty and upbeat and it wasn't and really disappointing actually to begin with I took it home and I was so disappointed by the smell smelling this piece the smell is definitely a little bit more prominent in the new batch so this one features mandarin oil neroli oil and rose and it's a really odd smell with the three of them combined it's not what you expect from those three ingredients when you smell it it's not particularly fruity my initial response would be it's quite smoky, not really potent, nothing like the bug perfume, and it's quite difficult to work out which component in the soap is actually creating this smell. You can smell the rose in there, but it's not a sweet rose. It sort of makes it a little bit musky and adds to this woody smokiness. It is, I think, the neroli that creates this smell. It has an almost I don't know, I wouldn't call it a grassy smell. It's not a grassy smell, it's a green smell. It's sort of like a really sharp, tangy, smoky element from the Roly. And it's not one that you'd expect for something of this colour. They did release last year as an Oxford Street exclusive, a Somewhere Over the Rainbow bath bomb. And I do feel as if that scent is more suited to the bath bomb because I preferred it. Check out a review on my website if you want to see more. And I'm hoping that will come out in the following weeks in the kitchen. This one, like I say, is quite an odd smell. It's, it's a dry smell. It's a smoky smell. 
you have that neroli coming through. It's quite a potent neroli smell, which brings out those slight green elements, but it's not a green soap. And the mandarin just adds a slight base tartness, if that makes any sense. It's not a fruity soap. What I have found with this particular soap, because I used it tonight, and I'm probably covered in luster now, but you know, it's not a bad thing. It's not the most generous of latherer, but at the same time, it's not a terrible latherer. It's just sort of it does its job. What I have noticed with this particular batch of soap though, is that it does stay on the skin for a short while afterwards. So this is a nice soap that actually you could probably couple with quite a few of the new volume four perfumes that are hopefully coming out in the near future. I think it's a soap that you have to try once. It's a love or hate soap, I think. I say that, but I don't love it or I don't hate it. I'm sort of that sitting in the fence in the middle just with a pretty piece of soap. But it's quite an interesting soap. I definitely think it's one you should give a go. We also have Blue Skies and Fluffy White Clouds Bubble Bar. Now I've come to realize in the last couple of months, I think I've known for a while, this sounds like it's going somewhere dramatic, it's really not, that actually I happen to love Blue Skies. I think Blue Skies is one of the most beautiful, rich, diverse scents that Lush do. I've recently been getting back into the bubble bar. I love old Blue Skies shower gel that came out last year in the kitchen, and I love this liquid bath. You can just pour some of this under the running tap and it will produce bubbles, just like a bubble bar would, but it's in liquid form. Now, first out, what I love about this product is its color. It's absolutely stunning. Let me see if I can show you without actually spilling it all over the floor. Hopefully, you can just see there that beautiful rich blue, which is what to me makes it just as special as the bubble bar. The bubble bar is gorgeous, strong in smell, really relaxing, fantastic if you have a headache or you just need something to calm you to help you to go to sleep. But this color blue is so much more suited to this scent and it would be great if they could make the bubble bar a little bit darker. This one features patchouli, frankincense and cinnamon and it's just as warming and as comforting as it sounds in the bottle. If you love the bubble bar, if you love the shower gel, you will love this one. And Lush just needs to bring out a perfume in this format. You can smell all three components in this. The cinnamon adds that very sort of warming spice undercurrent. You have the patchouli in there, which just brings that sultry element to it. And you have the frankincense, which again brings that lovely, well-rounded, warming smell. It smells a little bit earthy, a little bit, I was about to say dirty, but I don't mean dirty as in it's physically dirty. I just meant you get that dirt, dry, earthy element, which you find in Tramp Shower gel. This bottle of Blue Skies definitely outshines the bubble bar, lasts far longer and for the price tag it is definitely worth it. You could easily, easily get 15 to 20 baths out of that and that's being really generous. It generates lots of bubbles, it's nice and strong in the bath. I'm gonna stop gushing over it now. That's Blue Skies. You need to get this one. It's definitely a must-have. Perfect to warm up those little tootsies. Starting off on Tuesday, we have the Dorothy Bubble Bar. Now, this is one of the only products from this week's kitchen that I don't have. It's a stunning bubble bar. I remember seeing it in the shop back before I even bought Lush and thinking that was such a gorgeous, vivid colour. It shares its scent with figs and leaves soap and reminds me slightly of the recent Up to Daisy bath bomb that has come out recently for the Mother's Day range. If you like gentle floral baths, nothing offensive, you'll probably really like this. It features Elang Elang and it features Orange Flower Absolute, a little bit of sprinkling of geranium in there as well, and you just get a nice, non-offensive floral smell, nice and calming, nice and relaxing in the bath. It's not a favorite of mine, I'll give you that. It's not a bad smell, it's just not a particularly interesting smell and something that I would love to buy a million of. But if you're thinking about doing bath cocktails, as I said, it would go really well with Up to Daisy Bath Bomb. What is good about this bubble bar is that it produces a really gorgeous blue turquoise color in the bath water and it generates lots and lots of fluffy bubbles. The scent is pretty much on par with how it is before you put it in the bath. So you can still smell it during the bath, but again, it's not overly strong. And I think if you use something quite potent in the bath alongside it, it would thwart the smell. So if you a bath bomb with this Dorothy bubble bar, the bath bomb might sort of overtake the smell in the bath. It's not a favourite bubble bar of mine, but for those of you who might have visited my blog and seen my review, you'll see that my pictures aren't exactly up to date. Modern pictures of the bubble bar, it's not quite in focus, and me being me, it really bugs me. So I'm tempted to buy one and make Dorothy bubble bar my second cheat of the year, which is not particularly great when we haven't even left February yet. Oh, I don't know. Should I get one? Should I not get one? I don't know, perhaps I might just set up a really elaborate plan where I accidentally stumble over my desk chair, headbutt the keyboard and just so happen to have some Dorothy bubble bars in my basket with the button ready to press pay for PayPal and I accidentally hit it when I headbutt the screen. That's going for a lot of effort to try and lie to myself and it's not exactly going to work, is it really? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Should I get a Dorothy bubble bar? Should I click my heels and then click pay?
Also coming up on Tuesday is Sunny Citrus Soap. Now Sunny Citrus Soap holds a place in my heart. And I remember when you could buy chunks in the retro range before they even bought out the Lush Kitchen and the concept of that. But there is a rare occasion when a soap will just blow me away and Sunny Citrus is one of those soaps. I mean, this is quite a sad looking piece. Have a look at this. Just to emphasize the point, I feel I should cry when I talk about this soap, but I'm not going to because it's sunny citrus soap and you're supposed to be happy and sprightly and joyful and really annoying, apparently. It's amazing, actually. It shares its scent with the Sicilian bath bomb. If you love citrusy, fresh, fruity smells, you need to get yourself a piece of this soap. This is made up of mandarin, tangerine and orange oils and just as you can imagine it is as fresh as the day they picked those tangerines mandarins and oranges this to me as i said in my review smells a little bit like an orange starburst sweet so fruity so juicy and just zesty and there is almost and i'm repeating myself because i've read my review and i completely agree with my review funnily enough it has an element that's almost lime like about it there is something that makes you salivate i know we can't have them because they're not vegan they're not even vegetarian but you know haribo malwams they have got a component in there that when you eat one of those it just makes your mouth salivate and you want more and then you have to eat another one and so on and that is how they manage to get people to eat an entire packet never done that before in my life and i might have just lied on camera this is one that when you use I'm doing it now I'm salivating over a piece of soap and this is such a pathetic looking piece of soap I don't know why I'm doing it but it's just so so good one of my favorite soaps definitely top 20 soaps and there is just something really rich and really fresh about it really zesty it really does suit its name sunny citrus I don't need to really sell this soap anymore this is one of my favorites will I be buying some more no because I can't break my lush band but this piece has served itself well and I actually had to go and get this from my bathroom because it's been living in there since the day I got it. On to Wednesday in the kitchen and we start with a bath melt called Something Wicked. As you can see, this is an old style lush bath melt. As you can see, it's a gorgeous purple color there. This one is nice and pretty and is melting all over my hands. So this is a bath melt that has quite an odd smell to it. The ingredients here are jasmine absolute and oak moss. So as you can imagine, quite a strange combination, not necessarily one that everyone is going to enjoy. This bath melt also features ginger oil and it is definitely the ginger oil that stands at the front. Now, I think I've said this before in my review, out of all the herbs in the entire world, ginger is my least favorite herb. But for some reason in this format, it's quite nice. I quite like it. There's something about this with the mixture of the jasmine and the little bit of oak moss underneath that makes it quite an interesting ginger smell. So at the risk of repeating myself, the ginger is definitely the strongest component, but it is not that heated. It is sort of sweet. The jasmine adds like a little bit of sweet floralness to it that cuts off that really nasty, what I would call herbal ginger side to it. It's not particularly spicy. The oak moss is definitely there and you can smell it when you really focus carefully. But what the oak moss seems to do is ground the smell a little bit. Bring the jasmine down with the ginger and give it a slight forestry element to it. It's not a wet, it's not a damp oak moss smell, it's not a dry earthy oak moss smell. It just adds a little bit of greenery, a bit of forestry to it. I have two or three of these, so it is one that I do use fairly regularly in my bath and would definitely be suited for people who like those interesting scents from Lush. This is a scent that is not necessarily easily accessible to everyone, but it is quite a nice one that I think grows on most people. There'd be very, very few people that really detest the smell of this. In the bath, it melts down and produces a lovely, beautiful purple puddle. As with all of Lush bath melts, by themselves, they do moisturize you it's not greasy it's not oily does its job well you do feel moisturized afterwards doesn't particularly stay on your skin once you leave the bath and as I say by itself doesn't make the bath water that interesting that you want to sit in it for too long also coming up on Wednesday is little monkey bubble bar this is one that I just have to have in my collection and I think I have two more of these after this one this is fairly fresh it came out in the kitchen mm, five six months ago and it has on the top a lovely piece of banana what I love about this bubble bar is it does bananas justice, I think, personally. It is not your creamy, ice creamy banana like Sympathy for the Skin. In fact, it's quite a potent, soapy banana smell. But in a Little Monkey bubble bar, you have, first and foremost, fresh cut, diced, 
beautiful bananas. That is the key component in this. And alongside that, you have a little bit of geranium extract just to give that floral element. Now again, a second product I need to update over the weekend. Like I don't have enough to do already. This actually has quite a musky, cloudy, floral banana smell, if that makes any sense. When I initially reviewed this, I must have had a batch that was slightly different to this one because all I could smell was a really dry, starchy banana smell with a natural sweetness and something a little bit more added in as well. This batch that I've tried definitely has a stronger emphasis on that floral component. It is a floral banana smell. There's something soapy about it, something cloudy about it. My issue with this bubble bar, and perhaps when I try this one this week, it will be different. Obviously first of all looking at the color it's not going to turn your bath a color of water that you particularly want to bathe in again we make that association with um you know what i'm talking about the banana on the top it's just a bit of a decoration. You could eat that if you wanted to. But the other issue that I found with this was that the aroma tended to disperse quite a lot in the bath. I think it's due to the fact that bananas don't particularly have that strong overwhelming smell like an orange does or a tangerine or an apple. However, as I said in my review, and I remember this quite vividly, once I got out of the bath, and I toweled myself down, I found that the banana smell with the slight bit of floral muskiness to it came back again and I could smell it on my skin for quite a while. I would say with this bubble bar to get two uses out of it, on to Thursday in the Lush Kitchen menu, we start with the Wizard Bubble Bar. I will tell you now Lush fans, this little gem here will not be sticking around for long. And what is not to love about this? This wonky hat looking thing that we're supposed to believe is a wizard, but looks a little bit like, I don't know, the snout of a warthog? It's so cute. It's not even got a face. It's just got two nostrils, which aren't even nostrils, but you can pretend they are. And th what is this? This is a little star. But yet we bring these little fellas to life and think they have characters. So this shares its scent with the Jingle Spells Bath Bomb. And it also shares its scent with the Magic of Fun Fun. The key components in this are juniper berry oil and tangerine oil, but that is not the only two ingredients you get there, which makes it so special. In here, you also have a lang, -a -lang and you have fennel oil. And together, these four components just create such a rich smell. Now, I can't comment on whether or not in the bathtub this is going to be any stronger than the first time, but what I can tell you is that just standing here, giving it a sniff, this is definitely stronger. So juniper berry oil is quite a difficult component to really describe. It feels like a bit of a cop-out to say this, but it smells berry-ish, but it has its own unique berry smell. It has its own sort of syrup-like berry smell, but at the same time, there is sort of an underlying, very, very, very subtle smoky element to it with a little tiny hint of green. And when this mixes with the tangerine oil, you get such a rich, beautiful smell. It's slightly exotic, it's slightly intoxicating. It's it's a very fruity smell, but sort of a syrupy green fruity smell. You do get elements of the fennel, and the fennel sits just underneath the juniper berry and the tangerine. In the bath water, this colour is not as potent as you would expect. It's not as colourful in the bath as you would expect, because if you look at that, that's quite a beautiful colour. In the bath, it's not as rich as that. You do get a very light purple, sort of violet colour. On the positive side, this created lots of beautiful fluffy bubbles. And I remember actually they were bubbles that stayed around for a long time in the tub. I got to really submerge myself beneath them and just enjoy the blanket of bubbles, which is a pleasure I'm sure for most people in the bath, apart from my best friend who hates bubbles. I don't even know why I'm friends with her. I just want to know whether or not the smell's a little bit stronger, but that's the only reason that stops this bubble bar being rated a five out of six. But this is cute. Well, it's cute for a hat with a star and two nostrils, so. The other product coming out, I just want to eat it. Vanilla in the mist soap. This is another top 15 soap for me. Oh my goodness, Lush are spoiling with their soaps. This is a soap that to look at looks pretty disgusting. I mean, this looks like something that the cat sicked up and I just shaped it in the shape of a rectangle. But looks can be deceiving because this is incredible. This is a foodie, salivating, inducing wonder. This is far richer, far more complex, far more delicious than something like vanillary for sure. The ingredients list say that it has vanilla and it also has roasted cocoa. So you can sort of get where that musky, beautiful, slightly chocolatey vanilla smell comes from. But if you think this is just vanilla and cocoa, oh my goodness, you are in for a surprise. This soap 
has an element of coffee to it. Now, I'm not a massive fan of coffee. This is so beautiful and decadent. This just has a little bit of coffee, that little thread of coffee coming through. Nothing over strong. This just has a nice roasted cocoa and coffee element to it. This is a soap that you have to try. Yes, it's a foodie smell. Yes, it's a very rich pudding dessert-like smell. Lathers up nice and beautifully, produces a nice sort of oily lava, so it leaves you nice and soft. It stays on your skin afterwards. It's just such a treat to have this in the shower. First thing coming up on Friday is the Green Bubble Rune. I am pretty bitter about this product because the old style was vegan, and then they went and changed the format, and they threw in some honey just to insult me. So actually, this product is not vegan, even though I've reviewed it because I tried it before realizing it wasn't vegan. So I'm pretty bitter about this because I would actually buy some of these if it was vegan. Green Bubble Room is perfect for this time of the year. Springtime is the perfect time for this bubble room because it epitomizes everything about spring. It's fresh, it's uplifting, it's green. It smells a little bit like freshly cut grass, really sweet freshly cut grass with a zing of fresh lime thrown in there. It's not what I call an overly zesty smell, it's just very, very bright. It sort of looks exactly like it smells, if that makes any sense. It is so, so moisturizing. The bubble rooms tend to be more moisturizing than bubble bars because they have those extra shea butters, cocoa absolutes, almond oils, etc. Creates lots of light fluffy bubbles and you definitely feel the effects of it afterwards. Your skin is beautiful. The colour of the water is just the same as the colour of the bubble room. And despite the fact that it's not vegan, this is a really lovely bubble bar. And the final product of the kitchen, the most expensive product of the week, and luckily one that I have so I don't have to invest, we have Rentless Liquid Perfume. All I know is that I have enjoyed the company of this perfume since I got it back in September. This is gorgeous and actually one of my favourites that I forget about. I've transported into the next day, it's Saturday evening now, 24 hours after I did that last video. Basically the premise was last night I filmed the video, got towards the end, sat on my bed for five minutes just to tweak a few things and fell asleep. Just for continuity I've, I've got this on and put the lipstick on so I'm going to carry on now. The first thing I should say really which will sell it to a lot of people is this shares its scent with the Metamorphosis bath bomb so that little grey thing that spouts out all of those beautiful rainbow colours it shares the same scent as this beauty look at that. So this perfume has patchouli as the main ingredient and underneath that you have labanum oil and you have tonka absolute. So this scent is just gorgeous. It's exquisite and I really hope that Lush bring out more products in this scent in the future. If you don't like patchouli, stay away from this because patchouli is right up there straight away. You can smell that patchouli, that lovely earthy exotic scent with a little tiny bit of spice and then underneath that you have the labanum and underneath that you have the tonka absolute. Now the tonka absolute is really subtle in the mix. Don't expect this to be anything like Lord of Misrule because most people are thinking, oh my goodness, Tonka, patchouli, Lord of Misrule. No. In the Lord of Misrule, you smell the vanilla very strong and it mixes with the patchouli and you get that really creamy smell. The Tonka just adds a sweetness. It doesn't add a creaminess in this particular one. This is quite a sharp, potent smell. This is not sort of a creamy, rounded smell like Lord of Misrule. Very, very different. It's quite dry. It's quite earthy. It's quite woody, but it is delicious and one of my favourites. Just like all of the perfumes in volume four, Lush have really upped their game in terms of longevity because this perfume lasts hours. If you like patchouli, you need to get this straight away. If you love metamorphosis, you need to get this straight away. <sighs> so rich, so decadent. And there, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Lush Kitchen menu for this particular week. Top three products of the week. Oh, tough one. I am going to first of all have to say, and this is in no particular order, I'm going to say Blue Skies. Second one, I am going to have to say Vanilla in the Mist Soap. And third favourite product of the week. I think I'm sold over by Rentless. Yeah, definitely Rentless. I can't get enough of patchouli. So I'm going to say Rentless Liquid Perfume. I hope you've enjoyed the video for this week. One final message I'm going to throw into this video before I end it is for those of you requesting things like Lush Collection videos, empty videos, cocktail videos, etc. Please, please, please bear with me. I haven't forgotten. I'm not ignoring you. I am planning to do so many videos. I've got such a list of videos that I want to do for you guys. I just need to get on top of this mountain of reviews that have built up and up and up. Once I am up to date with them all, I will definitely, definitely, definitely be focusing more on doing videos for you guys and updating my content on Instagram as well. But anyway, let me know below what it is you're going to buy this week. I can't really say much else apart from take care, have a fantastic week, and hopefully I'll see you next week.